Okay, so um, I just finished doing the video on how to do photo collage text in Photoshop, but I wanted to show you how to do it in Illustrator as well in case you don't have both programs or you're not super comfortable in Photoshop. Um, it's possible in Illustrator as well. Um, these photo collage text um, looks are just kind of popular right now, so I thought I'd show a couple of different versions. So um, first thing you want to do is open up a new document, and I'm just going to do a basic square here. Um, I have a tendency to do 12 by 12 for a lot of things. Um, you want to make sure that you're in RGB color mode if you're doing this for sublimation. Uh, the raster effects, you could keep that at 72 PPI. You can export it as 300 later. So we're just going to do a 12 by 12 document. And um, I'm, I'm going to show you how to do it like this with um, some landscape photos that I've taken, uh, just so I'm not putting a bunch of personal photos on YouTube here. But first thing you want to do is create your word. So I'm going to write out the word glacier because that's where these photos um, were taken just for fun. And you hold down the shift key and make it nice and big. And the shift key just locks the aspect ratio there so it doesn't uh, skew the word at all. And go choose your font. You could do any font you that you want, but I like using impact for these because it's a plain font. It's not too busy and it's really thick. So you get to see maximum amount of the photos. And um, Illustrator is a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be putting the photos underneath it instead of over the word how it masks. I don't know why they like to make things a little bit confusing back and forth, but uh, basically we're going to pull in the photos just like we did for the other video. Um, you could just drag and drop whatever photos you want in. So I'm, I'm using some of my photography here. We're just going to grab some just for the sake of grabbing some. Okay, that should be enough to show you what we're doing. I'm going to zoom out because they're obviously giant. And I'm just going to grab them all and make them smaller so it's a little easier to work with. And then we're going to right click and arrange and hit send to back. So they're all behind. And then you move, oops, eh, see that's the one problem with behind. If, if you're trying to move the photos around and, and you keep grabbing the word and it's driving you nuts, um, if you come over here to your layers, you can lock the word glacier so it doesn't keep moving every time you're moving the words. Um, I know that that seems like such a lame thing to complain about, but it drives me wild when I'm trying to do something and I keep grabbing what's above here. So. Um, just lock the words temporarily, and we're just going to line these up in some sort of fun way. You can crop them if, if you want them to be more uh, like skinnier and not overlapping with each other, like this one, for example. Um, I, I don't want all of that, so I'm going to click on crop up here at the top. And for some reason, when I'm screen recording, it likes to be kind of slow. Okay, I'm just going to make it so I don't have quite so much stuff on it, and we're going to hit apply up here, just just so I could show you that, basically. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to line, line them up. Now, if, if you could see, I know it's hard to see. Let's hide, hide Glacier for a second. Um, this one is overlapping that one, so we're going to just go arrange, and we're going to hit bring forward. Okay, so I think that that, oh, no, I'm missing the word. R or the letter R there. I think that's a good starting point. We can always move them around later, but um, come back over here, unlock Glacier, because we don't need that to be locked anymore. Um, and then you select all of it. So you need to select the text and the photos, right click and hit make clipping mask. And that does all the magical things for you. Um, you need to make sure that you're only choosing one word. It won't mask multiple, or if you have it as a path, it has to be one compound path. You can't do multiple paths, um, and it has to be with, with multiple photos. You can't do paths over paths without having things start to con con conflict. Um, sorry, squeaky chair. 
Um, now, sometimes with these photos, um, they can get a little bit hard to read, um, just depending on what you're doing. I mean, these ones aren't bad, but ones with people, sometimes it's hard to read the original word. So one thing that I like to do is go in and add an outline to the letters. And so in Illustrator, how you do that is if you click on it and then you double click, it gets you into where you could select the letters, but you you also, let's see if I made any of these big enough where I can grab the images there. Um, you're, you're kind of going blind, but um, when you double click, you're getting into it while still being able to see it, um, but you can edit it that way. See, look, I'm still gonna deal with it trying to grab the text. Grab the photo there. You can move the photos around, um, but that text, you just have to be careful because it. Th that's why Photoshop, I think, is a little bit easier for this, um, is you, you're not having to worry about grabbing the text quite so easily. Um, but getting, I'm going off path here. Uh, when you double click, you can move around the photos, but you can also edit the text itself here. So um, I'm, I want to show you this for two reasons. One, sometimes it glitches out, but two, just so you know how to do it. So if you come in here and you select the text, not the photos, after double clicking, it gives you the option to add a stroke up here. And um, so you can go in and add your outline, change the colors or whatever, but here's what I wanted to show you. So once you do that, you hit escape on the keyboard and it brings you out. But if you look at this, sometimes when you add the outline, it does this goofy thing where it's not actually lining up with the photos. You see that? It's not lining up right. The fix for that is right now this is still editable text. So if you double click again, you come in here, you can actually like change it. Um, the, the, I don't know why, but when you do that and then you add the outline, sometimes it gets off. If you turn it into a compound path instead of editable text, then that outline will line up correctly. We're gonna release the clipping mask. There we go. Create outlines. That's how you create an actual path out of it instead of editable text. And then you wanna to go to object, compound path, make compound path. So it's a single compound path. So now we're back down to the path. Um, now, if you go through and you select both, and you hit make clipping mask and you double click to get into where you're editing the individual items in here and you select the words then you add your outline hit escape so you're out of the edit now everything lines up perfect i don't know why it does that weird little glitch when you have editable text still but if you turn it into a path right click, create outlines, make compound path. Then you add the outlines, everything's gonna line up really nice and you won't have that issue. But yeah, once you get your outline how you want it and you move the pictures around and all that, then you're good to go. Then you would just go up to file and export. Oh, export, choose where you want it. I'll just choose the desktop. And we're going to turn this into Glacier Illustrator and hit export. And this is where you want to make sure that you choose 300 PPI and transparent for your background and hit OK. And then you can bring it into whatever software you're going to print with, or you could print it straight from Illustrator if you want, however you needed to use it. But um, that's it. And then you're all done. If I missed anything, feel free to let me know um, and I will answer all your questions. But this is just a fun way to be able to make fancy letters and, and stuff for lots of different projects. So anyway, thanks for watching.